Hey everyone, there is a fun video tag going around my holy grail discontinued products and I thought, you know what, this could be a lot of fun. It's similar in a lot of ways to my where are they now videos that I do every month and if you enjoy those and or want to know what I'm talking about, I will list them, put them up there, that whole playlist. But um, I thought it'd be really fun to kind of go down memory lane and especially back to the early days of my life on YouTube and talk about some holy grails or I hate that phrase, but some of my favorite, let's just say makeup items that are no longer with us or are they? Let's start with face foundation and what I am wearing right now. So I love these and I'm so annoyed with CoverGirl. These are the CoverGirl Ready Set Gorgeous Foundations. My winter shade was 105, or well, it still is, as long as I still have this bottle. And my summer shade that I'm wearing right now because of some awesome sunless tanner that we'll be talking about shortly, it's 110. And this was the best foundation. It goes on so beautifully. I feel like it gives a very medium coverage, flawless finish. I put it up against any high-end foundation. It was such a great, part of the reason why it's so great, hello bra strap, hang on. Part of the reason it's so great is because it's so inexpensive for what it is. I took this with me everywhere. When I went to Fashion Week, of course I love it so much that they discontinued it. Sticking with drugstore foundations that were favorites that are no longer with us. I think this is a fairly recent one that they've discontinued. It's the Maybelline Dream Cushion and I just would get tons of colors. 20, of course, being my summer shade and this is pretty much dried up now and it's ready to go anyway. But it was a light to medium, buildable finish, easy to blend, you know, very user friendly. I never used the pad that came with it. I just would put my Kabuki flat foundation brush right in and then pounce it all over my face. Gorgeous. I liked that there was no actual liquid, so it was great for travel. Sadly, it is no longer with us. But the ultimate, and I will say holy grail, that it was discontinued, and I have held onto this bottle for far past its expiration date. I don't use it, I just look at it and pine for it. It's the original, and I'm gonna count this as discontinued because the, the reformulated one is terrible. The original Guerlain Lingerie Depot Invisible Skin Fusion Foundation with sunscreen, SPF 20. <sighs> Guerlain, why? I was a faithful repeat customer until you discontinued this. It was everything I was looking for. It was a pump, it was flawless, it blended well, it made me look like I was airbrushed, it wore forever, and then they reformulated it and it was horrible. Now, I will say I have dry skin and it's sensitive and it breaks out easily. So anything that makes my skin look great and doesn't get patchy on me and doesn't break me out makes me really, really happy and those were my favorites. So this is kind of funny because this was my, I think my first or one of my first luxury high-end beauty purchases. This was 100% influenced by Pixie 2 Woo. Remember Tanya Burr way back in the day? And this was, I we used to just call this Dior Amber Diamonds. I didn't even know the, the real name is. The Dior um, Shimmer Powder in the shade Amber Diamond. I thought this was the most, look at that reflecting. I am using lights today. I thought this was the most beautiful highlighter ever. And when this came out, it was. This was groundbreaking and it was so shimmery and it just blended so beautifully. I could wear it um, on my whitest of white skins. I could wear it on when I got less white. I, I don't want to say tan because that would be a misnomer. Well, I've held on to this clearly forever and I used it today and you can barely, I mean, yeah, there's a highlight there. But if this were re-released, I would not be repurchasing it. The cosmetic industry has come a long way. The highlighters that are on the market now, both drugstore and high-end, are so much better than what this was. Um, it's just kind of funny to look back and think, sometimes it's good that they did not continue with those. Now, a blush that I was obsessed with and were so great, the NYX individual powder blushes, specifically taupe, was like back when we were still attempting to contour, was one of my all-time favorites. There was another shade the name is gonna escape me. It's more of a corally, peachy shade, very reminiscent of NARS Orgasm. Loved that one. Those were great powder blushes. Those are great blushes, period. NYX, why? Why? Bring them back. They were so good. One more thing for the face that's not actually discontinued, but it gets a lot of, uh, what is it, fake news about this? its discontinuation, is this guy. This is the MAC 
Prep and Prime Highlighter in the shade Radiant Rose. And as of filming this on July 7th, I checked the MAC website. This is not only listed as not discontinued, it's listed as a top seller. So I don't think it's going anywhere. It's what I used for years and occasionally will reach for if I'm really, really tired and need a little extra kick in the uh, later moments of the day. It's a brush on pen highlighter. There's no shimmer to it. This particular shade is a light pink, which works great if you just swipe it here and here. And I will show you, it's like a milky white pink. So despite the ugly false rumors, this is not getting discontinued. If you love this, you do not need to stock up like a crazy person. However, I do want to point out that I have replaced it and uh, I've been using the Trish McAvoy Instant Eye Lift, yes, uh, in the lightest shade. Instead of that, I personally am finding that it's a little more user-friendly. It's a thinner, drier formula. Not drier, but it's thinner. It's a thinner formula. It, it just works a little better on my aging skin. Another face product that kind of goes into eyeshadow as well, and I have recently talked about this, and not everybody loved this, and I don't know that I would have repurchased it in its current state. I think like it needs a little work to be amazing, but I did want to mention the Tarte Clay Play because, I mean, first of all, this is a great size mirror, but other than that, look at all these perfect neutral brown tones. Such a great palette. The larger pans are meant to be contouring shades or bronzer shades. I think they're all a little too orange for that, but this whole thing is great for an eye look. They're very pigmented. They blend well, they're beautiful. I don't love this packaging, so um, they have released Clay Play 2. They didn't improve on the packaging there either. Um, but this was, I love a great basic, and it makes me sad that this is no longer with us. Okay, so we have moved into eyeshadow palette, so let's just jump right in. Let's start with the one I am wearing, and this is funny to me. So this is the Stila Natural Eyes palette, which are, that was the original name. They reformulated it or rebranded it and called it the In the Light palette, and then they just discontinued it. So this is the original one, and I'm wearing it today, and it was my all-time favorite Desert Island palette. It had all my warmish neutral shades with a couple little extra fun ones in here that I didn't always reach for, but I was glad to know I had. There was a great liner in here. I think it was Damselfish. It was a dark brown one that was absolutely perfect. I used it today. I haven't used it in probably years. It's not as good as I remember. Now, obviously the powder formula is not gonna be the same as old, but uh, as when it was new. But the shades aren't, I mean, it's pretty, don't get me wrong, but there are so many palettes I would reach for over this one now. I'm blanking out. I'll list some other palettes that I reach for now that I feel like have a similar color palette and are far better and it's just kind of funny. You remember some things to be better than they actually were. Now this one, um, I just love because it was my, my first, I think, palette in a long time that I had bought, also from Stila. It was the Pro Artist Palette number one. And I loved these shades right here. And I still very much do. I'm admittedly never gonna reach for these two right here. But um, you know, you can, this is Kitten, and it was in the other palette too. You can still get Kitten all by itself. The palette is probably eight or nine years old. Still really pigmented, really soft, and easy to blend out, and um, it's kind of funny. They made the, I feel like Stila, when they reformulated and rebranded their packaging, it just, the shadows were not the same. All right, and then let's talk about one that was recently discontinued and then reformulated and rebranded and why, why, why? The Naked, the original Naked from Urban Decay. I mean, was there ever a better one than this? I had it, mine came with the double-ended um, Urban Decay eyeliner, which was amazing. It was a black on one end and a brown on the other. These shades are all usable, all wear friendly, all very neutral, a little bit cool, a little bit, warm, but just, you know, pretty much neutral. The new rebranded one, there's like two or three shades that I'll use because they're there um, and because it was sent to me. But if I had to go out and buy it, honestly, I would not. And I've told you that before. I don't get, I just, I don't get it. I, if, if Urban Decay wanted to, I don't know, up their sales on this one, just repackage it in new packaging and release it with a limited edition double-ended pencil again and people would be buying this like crazy. I mean, this is still 
pretty much the original neutral colored large palette that was released back in the day. I don't know why they had to discontinue it. There was nothing wrong with this. Except maybe this gets a little dirty and you know, releasing it in a tin version or a plastic version, whatever. They don't listen to me. Another great eyeshadow at the other end of the spectrum that I have yet to find a replacement for and I'm looking was the Wet n Wild Single Eyeshadow in the shade Brulee. It is so basic. Um, there is nothing to it. It is the perfect brow bone shade of all time. It's like, uh, it's either 99 cents or $1.99. And it's so pigmented and so easy to use. And Wet n Wild decided they didn't want to keep it around. It's okay, I have six of these. So, in backup, so I'm never gonna run out. One more eyeshadow that I absolutely loved. I don't have it anymore. Remember when Victoria's Secret made makeup? Their single eyeshadow, it was like a bronze shimmery. It was in a square container. I don't know what the name of it was. I'll look for it, I'll get a picture of it. It was perfect, it was beautiful. I don't know why they stopped making it. I did wanna to touch on an eyebrow powder set. I don't even know if I could find this online anymore. It was from Sally Hansen, it was their Sally line. And it was a powder that looked very much like this one from Sigma that I have not tried enough to say whether I like it or not. But it came with two little, two powders of you know similar shades. And that is what I used to fill in my brows for years. And I had stockpiled it and I ran out. Now recently I've gotten a lot of questions about what I'm doing with my eyebrows. And it's a two-step process. The first thing I do is just draw basically the outline. And I have a video on that. I'll link it using other products, but the premise is the same. Um, and I'm drawing an outline and then filling it in with little strokes with the Trish McAvoy Precision Brow, I can't say that word, Precision Brow Shaper Pencil. I use the shade Universal. Um, sometimes if I wanna darken the tail just a little bit, I use the Wet n Wild Retractable Pencil in Ash Brown just on the ends here, but it's a little too soft of a pencil and I find that it doesn't stick around all day. And then I don't lighten my brows. I, have, I used to, I haven't in years, but what I do to just kind of take the edge off a little bit as I use the NYX Brow Mascara in the shade Blonde. I've been using that for years. I have not really deviated. Sometimes I try some higher end stuff. I always come back to the NYX Brow Mascara in Blonde. Love that. So, um, but I really do miss that Sally Brow Powder one. It was such a great brow powder. And again, it was like two or three dollars. Unbelievable. Now let's talk about lips. Let's address what's going on with my lips right now. I tried overlining them. I look ridiculous. I don't need to hear it from you. I already know. I did the Milani natural liner and then filled it all in and I kind of overdrew on the top. I think it looks a little, I feel like it looks a little strange. Anyway, I don't know why this was discontinued. It was the perfect pink. It's from Bite Beauty. It's their bouquet. I don't know what it is. It's lip crayon. I can't read it. It's in the shade bouquet. It's just, you know, my favorite warm pink and it's such a creamy, soft, formula and it's just, I loved it. I'm going to put a little more on. I'm sure this is expired and I'm, I'm risking my life for this, but it was so pretty. Why you bring it back? Please bring it back by beauty. Okay. This one brings back a lot of memories and it's way old school YouTube, but back in the day, Lisa, I'm talking to you, Lisa, Lisa D1 raved about this lipstick. It was from Estee Lauder. It was the shade Rose Amethyst. I still have, I still have it. I'm not putting this on my lips. It doesn't smell, it has no smell. Um, this was the most beautiful, let me turn that down, shade of pink, I thought. Where is it? There it is, right there. I just love this pink. Actually looking at it, it reminds me very much of the Estee Lauder Impulsive except Impulsive has no shimmer. This has shimmer. And I think I remember when Lisa first recommended this, this was just about to get discontinued or, or was even back then. And I used to go to the cosmetic company outlet at the outlet mall, the CCOs, remember those? And stock them to get this shade. And when I traveled, if I went by an outlet, I would, I mean, it was just ridiculous. The lengths we would go to to get this tube of lipstick, which I guess I was so afraid to use that I never ended up using it, which is really silly. Um, beautiful lipstick. And what's funny is, does this not remind you of the Charlotte Tilbury lipstick container? Just a little bit. It does to me. Estee Lauder, you're ahead of your time. Two more lipsticks or lip products that I dearly miss that I no longer have because they went out with the Great Purge is, uh, though the first one was from Too Faced. Do you remember their lip creams? Oh, 
Loved, 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 loved those. All of them. There was a Razzle Dazzle one. I can't remember the full name that I loved. It was like a, there was a soft red, a pink. I had about four or five of them. The formulas were beautiful. They're, I checked the Too Faced website. They're all sold out. They're, they used to have a ton of shades. Now they're listing five and all of them I think are sold out. So they're pretty much gone. And then the other one, again, back to old school YouTube, was there anything better than those Revlon lip butters and the lengths we all went to running around town to Walgreens and CVS and Walmart to try to find every shade. Love those shades. Love, love the case. Love, you know, the little translucent plastic that was in the shade of the color of this, of the lipstick. It was the, it was a very unique formula back in the day and it went on beautifully and the color range was beautiful and it was pretty much a universally flattering line. Love those Revlon. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, the Revlon glosses, the original ones, and the little tiny, the smaller square containers, Revlon. Those were so good. Why'd you get rid of those? And then I want to end with nail polishes. There are two that I loved. I still have. One I'm kind of afraid to use. Again, back to the old days of YouTube. This is from OPI, and it was from the Katy Perry collection, and it is Teenage Dream. Look at the sparkle from this one. I used to wear this on my toes and I remember going outside in the sunlight and just looking at the, at the glitter shining off my toes. I loved it. And then another one, again, I think I would only wear on my toes. I don't know, maybe I'll branch out and go a little crazy. This one was from Illamasqua and I was introduced to this line, again, back to the original Pixie Woo Girls used to talk about this line all the time. And this particular shade is is something I can't read, so I will list it below, but it, it's just almost a neon purple. It is such a fun shade, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on my toes next. I think this would be really fun for the rest of the summer. And then another one I thought was discontinued, so I was hoarding it, and as I was doing my research for this, I realized it is still available, or maybe it was re-released. I don't know, so I'm really excited because I'm gonna put this on too. That's from Butter London. We're gonna end on a happy note. Instead of mourning the loss of something, we're gonna celebrate a newfound love, a rediscovered love. This was from Butter London and it was Fairy Lights. And I'm pretty sure that Lisa Lisa D1 recommended this one. If it wasn't her, it was Makeup by Tiffany D. Two very old school, paved the way for the rest of us YouTubers who if you are not subscribed to either of them, you need to rectify that. I will put their info down below. It kind of matches with everything that's going on on my hands. It was fun to go down memory lane with all of you. Please, in the comments below, list your top two or three favorites that have been discontinued and were any of them something that I've mentioned in this video. This was a lot of fun. I'm gonna go wash off these probably very contaminated lip swatches and I will see you in the next video. Bye.